Welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire Symposium. My name is Nav. And I'm Harmit. And this is a Game of Thrones. Chapter 10. John. In this chapter, John has to deal with some catty remarks. Ha <laughs> ha. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. How are you today, Hermit? I'm good. How are you? I got about three hours of sleep, but that's okay. Well, that's probably your own fault, so. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it was anyone else's. That's why I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. You can take a nap after this, but just you got to stay awake for this little bit. Of course. Of course. I don't nap, though, so we just won't sleep. It's okay. Moving okay. on. So, uh, what did you think of this chapter? Um, I don't know. I was kind of, I don't know. I was a little bored. I was like, okay, all right, you're sad. You're you're bored. Sad this chapter is heartbreaking. What are you talking about? I was. I'm. I don't know. I just feel Cold-hearted like... Cold-hearted bitch? Yes. No, get no. <laughs> if this was like any other book, I'd be like, oh no, this is happening. But for this book, I'm like, John, you're going to deal with so much worse. You may as well toughen up. That's how I feel right now. I'm like, you're going to go through so much worse. Like, I just know that. Wow. That is not the, <laughs> what I expected from you. I wanted, <laughs> I thought you were going to be so outraged, but I guess you're just... No, when I was reading it, I was outraged and I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, What? What, what, how what but then like afterwards i kind of thought about it and i was like okay let's rationalize through this guys so that's what i did okay so that's my conclusion <laughs> at this point <laughs> all right uh let's get you started with your 60 second summary ready sounds good three two one go okay so it's a fortnight after Rand's fall and john's like going up the stairs i don't know why i remember that but he's going up the stairs to like bran's room and he, he wants to go say goodbye to bran because he's leaving today with uncle benjen and so he's like making all his goodbyes so he tries to say goodbye to bran that doesn't really go too well then um he goes um and he has this like weird but like kind of cute but like kind of brotherly but like kind of not interaction with rob and then lastly he has like the probably the most comfortable interaction with Arya. and then i forget what happens right at the end but yeah that's pretty much what happens he just has interactions with all of them they go from worst to progressively better so that's it okay well that was like 42 seconds wow. all right i should have given you 30 seconds and actually put you under pressure <laughs> um also, you just didn't mention Catelyn at all, but okay, whatever. We get it. You're over it. No, because I knew that as soon as I mentioned, like, specific details, I'd just start talking about it. So I was like, oh, well, he goes to say goodbye, Bran. Moving on. You know? It's just because, okay, this the this interaction w- between Jon and Catelyn is such a point of contention in the fandom that people who dislike Catelyn always cite this moment. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, to think that, that it, you're sense. just like unimpacted by it, it's just, Im- I can't even think, I can't. <laughs> I think. I can't even. I just felt like we were set up for it. Like I didn't, I just, I felt like I knew that was coming when he was like, oh, like, like as soon as he came, like as soon as he was like, oh, Catelyn's not left his side. I was like, she's going to say some shit. Like, I just know she is. Okay, all right. Just, okay, let's get into it. Happen. Why don't you start at the beginning and okay. we will talk about it when we get there. Okay, so like I said, it's been a fortnight since Bran's fall. And today, it, John's about to leave to go to the wall. And he's like, okay, gotta make my goodbyes. So he goes to say goodbye to Bran. And we find out that Catelyn hasn't left um, Bran's room since the fall, pretty much. And Catelyn does not want John there, and she makes it pretty obvious. But John's like, you know what? I'm gonna deal with dangers worse than uh, <laughs> Catelyn than Stark. Catelyn yeah. <laughs> Stark than Catelyn Tully Stark. So you know what? I'm gonna do it. And he and then like I forget what she said. I don't know why this. Okay, ring- wait. Okay, hold on. Pause. Um, just point. Want to point out one thing? While he's walking up the stairs, he's afraid. 
of going in because Kathleen is there. Yeah. Now, this kid, that tells you that he has been traumatized in his life, that he's afraid to go say goodbye to his brother because yeah. of the presence of this other person. Yeah. And you were so sympathetic to John the other... You were like, oh, I love... I, I get it. He's so emo and he, it's his life sucks. I totally get it. And now you're like, I don't care what happens to him. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that this one specific moment, if he lets him... If, if he lets this break him down, like, I, this is, like, tough love for me towards John. I'm like, buddy, if, if you don't just, like, roll with it, like, you're gonna, like, I'm trying to protect but, okay. him. The thing is, John does roll with it. But it's, exactly. It's, like, a me- this, this whole interaction is sending a message to the readers, though. I feel like if John isn't shaken by it, at least you reading it should be. Okay, I don't know why I'm so stuck on this point. Fine, you don't, you don't like- care. This is weird. You don't like John, but you're like, Elliot, I need you to sympathize for John. I think that it is very, it's just a really terrible thing that she does. And it, it lessens my respect for her considerably. Okay, so uh, John goes there and Kathleen doesn't want him there. And he looks at Bran and Bran looks all weak and he has hands that look like claws because all his skin is like he's he's barely uh. eating anything. Like they're feeding him honey and some water and stuff. I don't know. Um, John says his goodbye. Like you said, you know, he's like, oh, please don't die. We love you. Blah, blah, blah. And then Kathleen starts talking. Mm-hmm. Now, this part, she she she's like almost... You almost think like they're gonna have a connection, you know, her and right? John. She's like they give you that second like, opening up her. Like, no. Yeah, she's like, no. oh, you know, I prayed for Bran to be able to stay with me, and now the gods have answered my prayers. And she totally blames herself. Yeah. It seems like that's, but that's very, but that's very smart of what's his face, Martin. That's that, that's <laughs> so like that. Oh, when I got through that, I was but like, it Dang. makes it just that much harder because then yeah. she says like, I don't need your condolences or whatever. Yeah. And as he's leaving, she calls him by his name for the first time ever. So she knows he's going to remember this because yeah, she's also, never done that. This is like to, you know, John, it's like, oh my God, she called my name. So yeah. maybe she, yeah. it'll be something nice. Instead, what does she say? She says, it should have been you lying here almost dead because then I wouldn't have to care about it. Instead, it's my kid or whatever. Just, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um... If she had just been like mean the whole time without any like kind of opportunity for, you know, a connection between them, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. But the fact that she was kind of like, oh, we're almost going to connect, but then we're not. <laughs> yeah. The fact that she was that... so, like, cynical about it almost, just kind of, it's like, uh, it's like, who are you? What are you doing? Yeah, I... I, I guess. I, I mean, okay, so she, this is not, you know, her at her best, exactly. obviously. Her, you know, favorite kid has just, is on his deathbed, basically. Yeah. And, and now this bastard... Of her husband that she literally hates is yeah, there. Although, and- like, that hate is totally misplaced, if you yeah. ask me. Like, yeah. what has John to do with it? Yeah. Uh, blame Ned. Yeah. Be definitely. mean to him. Don't yeah. be mean to John. Yeah. But, yeah. It's it's not her best moment. And, you know, given the situation, it may be that she's not... If the situation was different, she may not have been this mean. Like, if John, John was just leaving and everybody else was just fine maybe she should have she did maybe she would have just ignored him and not said all these mean things but you know the fact that this is what she resorts to when she's at her worst it's just ah i don't like yeah. it <laughs> and you know so far we've seen Kathleen to be like a smart sensible kind of person yeah that you i remember when like. i said i wanted her to rule now i'm like well with this do i want her to rule <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> yeah if this is so, her decisions at her worst, because we've well, we haven't we haven't really seen people at their worst, but we've like heard about people at their worst. You know, I think this yeah. is the first time we've like seen someone. I mean, who knows? This might not be the worst. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Well, but. like it's definitely the worst that we have seen her in, in, and it's it's like you know, considering the situation it is, it does seem like some of the worst things that could happen to her. Yeah, but still, it's. 
I, you know, being in pain does not justify inflicting pain on other people. <laughs> That's yeah. just not it. I know we sometimes as humans do that because it makes us think that it'll, it'll relieve some of our pain, but it doesn't. And it's just, it, it was a sucky, sucky thing to do. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, well, well, um, I don't know. I don't know. Are we going to have more than two chapters of every character? Um, well, have we, have, have we, we are had... like in the first, this is chapter 10. Okay. Yeah. So we definitely are. So like, maybe, maybe there's redemption. I just want to see how she pulls away from this. Well, what what do you think would qualify as redemption? What would make you say, okay, I don't hate her anymore? What would she have to do? I was thinking about that, and I, I feel like I need to really think on that before I can answer that. Like, how can she make it up like, to John? I, how can she... To John? I don't well, know. That to me as a so, viewer, it'll... Or, like, obviously, it's reader. different, right? Or, sorry, reader, it's different, right? Because... For John, like that's that's really really personal. It's it's very difficult to ever make so, up something like that. But I'm not personally attached to it, so she could like she could do theoretically. I don't know what, but she could do something, and I could be like, you know what? She's not the worst person. Okay, so you don't think that she's gonna come back from this? I don't think interaction that, with John, but that no, I don't as so. readers will get to like her more depending yeah. on some of her other actions yeah or kind of like well we already like understand where she's coming from but maybe we'll just be more just like knowing other things you know we'll be able to take the bad because there'll be other good as well because we don't okay. really know any of them yet <laughs> like we don't know any of these people we just know what they tell us in like very specific snippets of their lives like they could be thinking like completely different things like two minutes later okay so you're willing to forgive her this moment if she does other non-related good stuff. Yeah. If she... If we don't get another moment like this, I, I think I can... I think I can think about forgiving her. Okay. If we get something like this where she's just... Where she... Like, if if we just get a continued, like, she's unable to control her grief, I don't know. I don't know how I can... Like, I, I don't know how I'd be able to like her despite that. I'd want to, but if all we're seeing is the bad side of someone, it's very hard to see the good. So hopefully we get there. Okay. Hopefully all right. Brian gets better. Yeah, uh, I think you're actually quite fair to her. You know, she is grieving, but at the same time, she is very mean. So yes. Gotta balance those yeah. two things. Don't worry. John's still my homeboy. Just because I'm not, like, <laughs> completely, like, oh my god, John. Like, I'm just, this is just tough love, John. It's okay. You're gonna get through this. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> we totally from went there. On <laughs> Raining it back in, John <laughs> goes to say goodbye to Rob, who's yeah. in the yard and getting things settled. I like and... this interaction. I think this happening right after I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm okay with this chapter because I like yes, this. Yes, okay, you know? but I have another oh, no. point okay. here. I don't like okay. this. You're going to ruin it for as me. As soon as John walks up to Rob, Rob can tell from his face that his mother must have been mean. And John, you know, lies. But if you think about it, like Rob's first words are, oh, my mother. And that tells you something about how she's been no, treating him yeah, over the I know. 14 years. I know. That Rob knows. I know. That's what it's going to be. I literally wrote that down. I was like, I was like, Rob? So this, like, for John is not, it may be, like, the most, uh, like, standout. Dark. Or maybe oh, the most direct, because she called him by his name. She's like, she, like, yeah, called him Yeah, it back. may be the most impactful overall, but this kid's been you know, yeah. going, has been enduring this abuse his entire yeah. life. <laughs> and it's probably and just, like, micro things most of the time. Like that, like, oh, well, sorry, bastards, can't sit at the table. Like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not as direct as being, like, because, you know, people in yeah. the land you would should justify that. <laughs> like, people in Winterfell would justify, oh, a bastard can't sit at the table, you know? But yeah. I'm sure there's some people, you know, so, well, would the, be like... The point is just that, like, you know... She was exceptionally mean this time, but it seems like she has been mean 
his yeah. entire life. So, yeah. you know, this is like her lowest moment. This She's grieving. Her kid's dying. Yeah. I get it. But all the other stuff, like, I just can't stand with the fact that she blames John for being a bastard. Blame Ned. He's the one who went out and had sex with somebody else and then brought the son back. Like, I... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I just hate it. It's not John's fault, and I hate that she blames him. Yeah. But yes. Okay. Rant over. I promise. I won't. <laughs> let's move on from this topic okay. and get to something good. Okay. So, so Rob and him, like the little, the, did they hug, right? That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Corona times, my brain was like, wait, they're hugging. And then I was like, harm it. <laughs> <laughs> harm it. Because I remember I've been watching like talk show clips and stuff on like YouTube. And, you know, usually they like see each other and they hug and then like they're playing games and they like interact. Right now they're just like. Should we just do a air high five? And it's so dumb and funny. <laughs> anyway, rant over. Moving on. Yeah, no. Every time I watch any anything on TV, I I'm always like, oh wait, you're too close. What are you doing? Where's your mask? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but yes, this is not only a different time, a whole different world. So I think yes. they are safe. <laughs> yes. Um. So they hug and you know say goodbye and then I I run. really like this interaction. Like it was like this like weird like. Like, it was, it was like, a brotherly like, yeah. sibling. Love. I liked yeah. that, like, I don't know. I think it just, like, I think because, you know, we know that John's very emo. And when you have <laughs> a lot of emotions, sometimes it distorts, like, the truth, right? So, okay. from, from what he, from how he was speaking in previous chapters. And once again, just to, just to the listeners who don't know me, I forget things as soon as I read and hear them. So if you ever s- hear me like say wrong things, it's because I just don't remember. But I think this is what happened in previous chapters. He would be like, he, he'd be like, oh, like, they always treated me differently. They're always like this. So in my mind, I was like, the kids aren't nice to him except for Arya. And I was like, I feel like him and Rob don't just tolerate each other now. I feel like they've, like, always at least tolerated each other. Yeah, even they're, like, good each- friends. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> but my previous chapter inhibitions were, like, getting in the way. I was like, wait, is this true or is, is this just because of grief? It's, like, well, know. you know, it seems like the kids aren't so much biased against him yeah. as, as you know, Catelyn is. I think because the only other kids we've met are, like, Viserys. Oh, Sansa, and, though. Like, she does make a point to always call him her half brother. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um she like I think, you know, Arya is obviously very familiar with him. Rob and him are the same age. So, so they're yeah. they bound to be together. And you know, little Rickon, he used to <laughs> he was the one who ran up to yeah, John in the yeah. procession. Oh my god, I can't forget that moment. They're it was just so, so cute. cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we Bran, Bran and him Bran got just, along. Yeah. So. Bran was just so, kind yeah. of everyone. Yeah. So it, it's just Catelyn and Sansa it seems like. That was a good moment. A uh, nice little, I just it it made my heart warm, and it was also yeah. nice that it was just like the brothers, and they were just like, okay. Moving on. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, we we're like talking too much okay. about each. Scene. So then he goes to say goodbye to Arya, and Arya's repacking because she packed too. <laughs> she, she packed too messily. Is that a word? Yeah. She just threw her stuff in the yeah. trunk, and she was like, "Oh, good to go." Because you know yeah. they're traveling down the road, and this isn't yeah. like some. Yeah, things are gonna get messed up. So she's yeah. like, "Why not just mess them up now?" <laughs> yeah. Yes. But Septa Mordain did not like it and makes her repack. But Arya gets her wolf to help her, which is just so <laughs> which cute. was so funny. I really enjoyed that. I was like, "This is the most practically we've seen the wolves behave. Like otherwise, it's just like, oh, the wolf is saving my life, you know?" <laughs> like- <laughs> yes, that's totally not practical at all. <laughs> Yeah. But this is like the most pet like. Like you might think, like you know, a puppy. That yeah, you have, exactly. Like, you I, it go was very fetch and then, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a cute moment. Yeah. So John gives Arya a sword, which was I was like, yeah. dang, okay. And he had it, and he had it specifically made for her to like her specifications. It's tiny like her. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And she is just thrilled. Um, yes. And John, you know, she's like, you got to train with it and get, you know, learn how to use it. You can't just um, go around pointing it at people. <sighs> and he gives her her first lesson in sword fighting. Stick him with the pointy end. Which is, oh, this is like a thing that people, people say a lot. <laughs> 
It's cute. Yeah. But yeah. So you were saying something before yeah. I interrupted you. Her sword's called Needle. I don't understand that. Wait, wait, but... wait, wait. Stop. Okay. So they know each other so well that they talk at the same time a couple times. So when John's like, oh, you know, you got to take care of it, hide it, go, uh, you got to And most practice. importantly, don't tell Sansa. Don't Sa- tell Sansa. Because <laughs> then, then, you know, it, it, they both know that she's like a tattletale. Yeah. <laughs> so if Sansa knows, Septim Wardane's going to know, and Arya's not going to have her sword anymore. No. So, yeah. And uh, that's it. And they say goodbye. And as John's leaving, he's like, you know... All the best swords have names. Can you guess the one for this one? And at the same time, they say... Needle. I don't understand. Don't you get it? No. Because in the last Arya chapter, she was stitching and she hated needles. She hated stitching. She doesn't like... Okay, so... You don't get it? She doesn't like stitching, so why is it needle? So, sh- Okay, oh my god. You, I, I can't with you in this chapter. <laughs> okay, so Arya doesn't like using regular needles for stitching, so this is her needle for poking people full of holes. Oh, come on. Okay. It makes sense. It and makes like sense, but I... Thin, like, it her. makes sense, but I wanted it to be better. I just... I didn't... Like... Oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. I don't know. I was just looking for something bigger, so I think I just ignored that. Okay, so I was it's looking like... For something bigger. The needle, it's no, no, no. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's so thin thin and long. Yeah, I get it. And it also relates to Arya, as in that she doesn't like normal needles, but she loves this needle. Yes. All right. (laughs) This is her needle. Okay, I guess. See, I wanted to be. I wanted it to be like some inside joke. Well, it is. I guess. Whatever. It's fine. Okay. I just don't like so. I I I don't like you. Okay. Well. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, this is like the first chapter where we haven't, we have like disagreed so much. We're allowed to do that. It's okay. I know, but <laughs> it's just uh, tough for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It, it works because we need all perspectives in this, okay? Yes. All being two different pers- <laughs> perspectives of people who are really alike, actually. <laughs> all, right. all right, so that's it for the chapter. Now on to predictions. Okay. I, I mean, needle, someone's going to get poked with the needle. That's, that's going to happen. Not like okay. right now, right now, but like later right now, maybe. I don't like know. in this book, in the next book, in, in this, this series. Book. Oh, in Arya's going to start poking book. people. Okay. Yes. Uh, will she train with it? Will she be able to do that? Uh, I think she's going to have to train herself or maybe she's going to meet someone else that she can like train with like john said there's tons of people there go find someone yeah and is sansa gonna find out about needle no no okay well she's not allowed to (laughs) that's good (laughs) yes um i'm just gonna look through so you earlier said that kathleen will not make it up to john but she will do other good stuff that will Mm -hmm. make the readers be on her side okay Mm-hmm. And uh, is John gonna, you know, make it to the wall and be a part of the Night's Watch and all that? Yeah. All right. Do you think that Catelyn's prayers were what actually caused Bran to fall? <laughs> no, I, I really don't. So you don't think the gods played any role in this? No. M- no. Don't tr- okay. No, don't mess me up. No. <laughs> No. Uh, anything else? Just, uh, you know, Arya's gonna go to King's Landing, learn sword fighting, and then poke someone with needle at some point. Okay. And uh, so what is Kathleen gonna do? Is she just gonna sit in Bran's room forever? So they're leaving, right? So she has to lead. But then I was also thinking, like, first I was like, okay, well, she has to lead. She has to pull herself together. But then I was like, also, she does have tons of people. She has, like, the maester. She has, like, Rob's currently stepping up to the plate because he knows he has to. Like, do you know what I mean? She could just, like, you know, wallow for a couple. Be there and let herself just... Just a little bit more. But, like, eventually, you know? Well, what's going to cause her to eventually stop wallowing? Is is Bran going to wake up? Well, what's going to happen? I think... I don't know what would, because, hmm, I don't know. Maybe, like, 
maybe like some some sort of like new message from Liza. Like you know, last time she was like, "Oh, like Lannisters kill oh, them. beware of the Lannisters or whatever," and yeah, something like that. Some and intrigue she's gonna comes be like, up. I gotta go. I gotta do this for Bran, and then she's gonna gotta go where? <laughs> like gotta go like lead Winterfell and all the people. Yes, but what are okay? So everybody, all the intrigue, all the Lannister, the Brathians, and even most of the Starks are gonna be in King's Landing. Catelyn's gonna be in Winterfell. What's she gonna do all the way up there? What do you mean all the way up there? Like, how is she going to take action on Liza's message if she's in Winterfell? She's going to, like, try to get in contact with... Like, maybe Liza's going to be like, Ned's life is in danger because X, Y, Z. And then she's going to be like, you, you messenger, you have to get this <laughs> message to Ned. Or, like... <laughs> yes, that is You very, know what would be so um, funny? So... You know what would be so funny? If she had to send John. That would be, f- well, not funny. John's gone to the Night's Watch. I don't know How if he, like, somehow didn't him? make it. I'm just saying, like, if things were different, let's <laughs> say, like, somehow she let John stay. If she had to, after saying all that, but be no, like, hey, John, can you do this? At the end of the chapter, John's last line is that Arya's laughter kept him warm on the ride to the wall. So he has gone. Okay, has in an alternate him. reality, then. This is, we're not talking alternate realities. We're talking what could happen. Okay, well, I don't know, then. Okay, so she's going to send a messenger to yes. warn Ned about not Liza's message. Couldn't Liza just have sent a message to Ned, but okay. No, <laughs> like, but she's the one who knows the password. It would get messed up, and she wouldn't want anyone else <laughs> to find out. Okay, all right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That's it for this chapter, I think. Um, do you want to flip the page and see what's next? Okay. Daenerys. Do you remember who that is? Yeah, <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> I've been thinking about her. I'm like, where is she? <laughs> you, oh Yeah, I kind of totally forgot about her, actually. Because <laughs> you get so caught up in the Starks and all that. Yeah. Um, so Daenerys, last time we left her, she was going to meet Khal Drogo. Mm-hmm. And he was possibly going to accept her as, as his bride. I think you said something along the lines of, oh, he's going to want more than just a bride. And... Viserys, Daenerys' brother, won't meet her demands, so there's going to be some possible, like, wedding um, wedding negotiations or something. I don't know. Mm. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, do you still think that's what it's... I... I feel like... I feel like we... Like, because when we met her, the basis of the... Like, her entire chapter was like, hey, we need to go meet Khal Drogo, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, we haven't really seen her, like, daily life. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know what what we could go back to other than, like, resolution of the previous chapter. So, I'm just trying to think, like, do do I think, like... They could. Do you think they could she's get, gonna get well, married? Didn't I also have a prediction? I also had a prediction. Like, if they get married, like, what was my prediction? I said something about like if they get married, this is gonna happen, or like, I think I was like, well, it was like, well, the whole point of them getting married is so that Viserys has an army, and can go to Westeros, and you know, did I say claim- something? I thought I'd said something like how like um like he was gonna. You know, they were going to get married, and then he wouldn't give, like, Viserys the army because he was like, that's too many people, or, like, I don't want to do that. Did I say something like that? Actually, let me go to our website and pull up your predictions (laughs) from that chapter. Uh, That's actually the last chapter when I updated the predictions. I am so (laughs) behind. (laughs) It's okay. Okay, so you say Drogo will like Danny, but he'll want more in exchange for the army. So that's what I... And Viserys won't meet his tr- demands because it's too easy and they have to go through more struggle to get to Westeros. Is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. So I guess, like, just just to add on to the first part, like, the, like, oh, he'll like Danny, but he'll want more. They could get married, but I feel like he wouldn't be satisfied enough to just be like, okay, well, here's my army. Uh, cause okay. he's uh. the one in power. He can easily be like, yeah, sorry, buddy, I don't want to do that. Okay, uh, that makes sense. And okay, l- I'm just going to read your other predictions just because, okay? okay? <laughs> so you said that you felt bad for Danny, but don't really expect her to, you know, do anything because she has no power. 
Mm-hmm. And then you were like, oh, she could get power by running away, but that she won't do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you you were like, oh, Illyrio's, he has some secondary intentions behind this deal because he's spending way too much money for it to just be for, you know, oh, yeah, here, take take the bride and <laughs> I'll take yeah. a bribe or whatever. Yeah. Da, da, da. And you thought that Illyrio wants something from Drogo, so he set up the marriage in return for whatever he wants. Like, that's his actual... Mm-hmm. That's his actual but I feel intentions. Like now thinking back to that, like, all, remember when all the girls were, like, fawning over Drogo? Like, I don't think it would be hard for him to just, like, get a wife. Unless he's like, oh, I want royal blood. And then it's like, well, they're the last Targaryens. So I guess in that okay. case. Okay. So he might have some interest in this marriage as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, all we know, we we never saw them meeting. So for all we know, they could have fallen in love at first sight or whatever. <laughs> I mean, she was terrified of him, so I don't think so. Well, he could have fallen in love at first sight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And she doesn't get much of a say, so yay, hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're not going to do a game of who or what this time, just because this has been a long chapter and I don't want to argue more anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it might end up in our divorce, and I don't want that. No, just kidding. Someone's dramatic. Uh, yes, I like to be dramatic. <laughs> I am all of the things that John is. I'm dramatic, ah, I'm emo, which is maybe why Maybe that's I'm... why you don't like him. Exactly, be because enough. I have... I have too much of it inside myself. I don't That's need so anybody funny. else reflecting it, okay? That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. But at the same time, you empathize with him because you like, you're like, okay, I kind of get it, buddy, but like, maybe don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to read about it. <laughs> okay. Right. So, uh, I think that's all we have then since we're not playing the game, Right. Yeah. Okay, I'll do one one term. I, I can't like not do it. It seems weird. Um Okay. Ready? Okay. No, I'm not gonna do it. Actually I'm gonna go. No, do it, 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 do it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Are you ready for a game of who or what? Yeah. Okay. So there uh the first term. Who or what is Summer Hall? Is that like a hall at a school or is that a name? <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, you tell me. Um, Summer Hall. Um, like, that could be a name. But that's too, like, it feels too, like, not modern, but it, it, like none of these names are names I'd hear now other than like Rob and Ned. Well, even mm, that, uh, it's a name. It's a girl. Okay. Summer Hall. That's her name. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Uh, what? Well, let's do one more. And this one, you, I, you might know. Okay. You should know. I don't know if you'll remember though. Oh no. Who or what is Pike? Pike. I feel like I remember reading about that in the appendix, but I don't know if I'm making that up. But I feel like yeah. Mm, okay. You did read it. I don't remember, but. It's- it's a person if it's in the appendix. Um, I don't know. Okay, I'll tell you. Okay. Pike is the, um, like, castle of the Iron Islands. It's where Theon's dad rules or whatever. <laughs> Theon? Theon, Gray- Theon Greyjoy. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, so his dad rules from Pike, which is a castle or an island of the Iron Islands. Mm-hmm. Pike is also the last name of all bastards born in the Iron Islands, so it's a who and a what. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Okay, <laughs> all right, that was our game of who or what. Yay. Quick round. All right, let's wrap it up. So, uh, everybody, as always, you can find us on our website at popculturesymposium.tumblr.com on Facebook and Instagram at Pop Culture Symposium, on Twitter at Pop Symposium, and you can email me at popculturesymposium at gmail.com. I am so getting so good at this, honestly. <laughs> You've said it so much now. It's entrenched in my brain. <laughs> well, till next time, farewell, my friends. Talk to you later. Mm-hmm.